All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. It's been a long journey, but we have finally made it here to RTP, and everyone is very excited. For, for those of you who I haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, introduce myself. My name is Will Eglin. I am IEM CFO, and uh, myself and, and many others in this room are, have recently moved here to North Carolina from Baton Rouge, along with my wife and my two young kids. So it's my privilege to welcome you all here today to our grand opening as we celebrate uh, the opening of this new facility and we gather to thank all the wonderful people in North Carolina, many who are here today, uh, who have been supportive of us as we, as we have transitioned our office here uh, to Research Triangle Park. So thank you all. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first speaker of the day, uh, Governor Beth Perdue. Governor? Thank you. Good afternoon. It's a great day for IEM and for North Carolina. Madhu Bearwall, we are really glad that this day has come. Uh, I'm delighted to be here with Will and with Congressman Price. I said welcome home, Congressman Price. He's back with us for a long time now, and we really thank you for your leadership on this latest vote last week to help North Carolina schools and our Medicaid program. We thank you for that and your leadership on it. And now this day is all about Mandu Berry, Berrywall and I am. Uh, Keith Crisco and I, in our earliest days as a team, had the opportunity to talk to you and to your leadership uh, team about what it is that North Carolina could do for a company like I am. And this was uh, a big sale. It was an important sale because it was one of our first times put, putting together the state collaboration with the locals, with uh, all of the players in the triangle and across the state. And, you know, it didn't just happen. Back in 2007, I had had the opportunity to lead the military initiative for the state during the Base Realignment and Closure Commission. And I was audacious enough, if you recall, made some people mad when I reminded them that we were the third largest state in America with boots on the ground. But at that time, we ranked either 33rd or 34th in the number of defense contracts and the real jobs that were affiliated with the non-boots positions. And that the defense industry was ripe for the picking in North Carolina, that together we could build a whole different platform. And we can convince a lot of generals and admirals and a lot of companies in North Carolina to form something called the Military Foundation. 2007 was a red letter day. Its goal was very simple. This state was in the military defense business and once we get in, we intend to do more than dog paddle. We intend to swim with the sharks. And that's what we're doing. Uh, the decision by IEM to locate to North Carolina represents the first major win for the North Carolina Military Foundation for the military defense team that Secretary Crisco has put together in the Department of Commerce that is very strong and very focused for the local partnerships with Durham's uh, elected and uh, private sector. So when I talked to Madhu, we talked about the company. I said, tell me what you do. And I remember that cold afternoon. She said, this is a company that is unique. We provide advice around terrorism and homeland security, if I quote you correctly, for not just the federal government, but we do that same kind of strategic advice and counseling and program setup for cities and for ports and to private companies as well, and how they respond to threats uh, from something as usual as a natural disaster to something as unprecedented as a pandemic or a terrorist attack. They do it all. And I said, well, could you tell me how many employees it takes to do all that? Because that sounds like a big job. And Keith Grisco was salivating, and Madhu said, well, <laughs> I th about 450. And we began the dance with this company uh, in North Carolina. We worked hard and aggressively as a team, the locals and the state and many of our friends who are here today from the private sector, to show them 
that North Carolina was the right location for this 21st century kind of company. That we not only had the workforce, but that we had a history of innovation and entrepreneurship, and we were as good as anywhere in the world for these public-private partnerships. And she listened very respectfully, and then she did her homework, as one would expect a successful CEO to do. And she was sought after by other states, so this was not a sure thing, but we wanted it to be a sure thing. And after several months and several visits to North Carolina, we began to think that perhaps we were first on IEM's dance card. But we continued the dance until late this spring when IEM shook hands with the secretary and said, we are coming to North Carolina. And so today they are here with 430 jobs. They have stood up a company within these walls. They understand that North Carolina is serious about this defense industry, this Homeland Security cluster that we are in the process of building that is dynamic and being talked about all across America. Let me remind you, if you've forgotten, about what skin is in the game to do. A $23.5 billion impact, military and defense. The Department of Defense spending in this state last year grew by 10%. Didn't do that in all states. Very few states saw that kind of growth. And if you happen to pick up this morning's edition of the USA Today, you will see their lead front page feature article is about communities like Jacksonville and Camp Lejeune and places like right here who not only do boots on the ground, but also do, do defense contracting and homeland security jobs. I am fits the bill there. You know, in the past year, for all of you who understand about this recession and this new normal, and for Madhu and I am and other companies, it's been a hard time in America. I've been very upfront about that. It's been a hard time in the entire world with this global recession. We feel like North Carolina is in the early throes of recovery. There will be a new normal in North Carolina and America. It will be slower than many of us want, but it indeed is happening as we speak. And this past year, the Department of Labor has just announced that out of the top five states in America for job creation, you happen to be sitting in the state that's the third most successful. Where many other states lost 100,000 plus jobs, North Carolina gained about 30,000 jobs. That's because of the team we put together, the team that has been very focused and targeted and as aggressive as any economic development team in North Carolina's history to grow jobs in this state, to keep companies like Medus and IEM coming here, and once she gets here, to be sure that they understand we are quite serious about helping them and making sure that regulations and government intervention doesn't interfere with the work that they do day to day to keep their customers happy and satisfied and to keep our world safe. Thank you, Madhu, for choosing North Carolina. We are excited about you being here. I personally am excited to have another successful woman corporate CEO in North Carolina. That's important to me. I thank the Military Foundation and I really do look around this room and thank so many of you from the private and the public sector who stepped up to make this first big win a real potential reality for the secretary and I in our first year of service. So this is a big day. And my only challenge to IEM and to Congressman Price and Secretary Crisco and to Manu Berrywall is if you've got 430, it seems like the world would be a whole lot safer with 860, so. 